Hello and welcome to this new series of Blender Tutorials. In this one we're going to make some chess figures. So without any further to do, let's hop straight into it. First I'm going to delete everything by pressing A, X and then delete. Now I'm going to drag in a reference image which I got from the internet, it's from iStock, but you can basically choose whatever you like. Now I'm going to press Alt G and Alt R to reset the location and the rotation. Press R, X and 90 in order to give it a rotation of 90 degrees and I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh and then Cylinder in order to get a cylinder. I'm going to do go down here and change the vertices to be 16 so we have less topology to work with which makes stuff a lot easier. I'm going to press Number Pad 1, just uh, go to this vertex uh, shading mode or wireframe shading mode and I'm going to bring it over here to the pawn. I'm going to scale it by pressing S. And basically we're trying to align this as best we can like so. And I'm going to bring it up until it basically lines up here on the bottom as well. I'm going to go into edit mode by pressing tab and with Shift R we can add in some edge loops. I'm going to add one here where the rounding or the curvature starts and I'm going to do the same thing for where it ends. Now I'm going to press Alt Shift and click here on this line here so we can select the top line as well. Then I'm going to press S which basically scales it along this middle line here. Then Shift and Z to restrain it to every axis but the Z axis so it only moves in and out and I'm going to bring it up until here. Maybe a little bit more inside. Now we're going to do the same thing again for this curvature here. I'm going to make it a little bit faster since we already saw how to do it in the first steps and here basically again. like so and we can delete this top part here because we won't need it. So now we're going to give this some curvature which is going to be done by adding in another edge loop, bringing it up a little bit and bringing it out a little bit. It doesn't have to match this here completely, it can go a little bit outside because when we subdivide it it's going to be mushed inside anyways. So let's do the same thing over here and over here, something like this. Now if we go back here, you can see it looks fairly nice actually. When we go to the blue wrench, add in the subdivision surface modifier with the level 2, you can see it gets a lot smoother, but it also develops the star pattern down here, which is not nice. So we're going to press I for inset, we're going to do it once and then twice. So now it looks a lot better on the bottom. Press W to shade it smooth, so we get something that looks like this. But now it's very undefined, so I want to give this some more edge loops. I'm going to bevel them with Ctrl B until I get something that looks like this. I'm going to get this line here and move it up. So this is not as sharp as this here. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Whoops. Bevel it out. Now we get this creasing here, which is really nice. And the same thing over here. So now we have something that looks a little bit more defined and nicer, I think. So and now we can adjust these here to match the reference a little bit better if you want to. If you don't, it's fine as well. Good. Now I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Shift D and bring it to the side because we're not going to remodel it, we're just going to bring it over like this and it's going to be fine. Now let's get to the pawn. We're going to do the pawn today, then tomorrow the bishop, then the queen, then the king, then the rook and after that the knight because it's the hardest to do. So let's get straight into it. We're going to disable the subdivision because it's going to hinder us more than it's going to help us while modeling. I'm going to E, press E and then Z to extrude along the Z axis. Scale it in until it matches the reference again. E, S to extrude and scale. E, 
Z to extrude along the Z and do the same thing again over here and scale it in until it matches again. Again some rounding here and now we basically got that. So now for the sphere there is a couple of ways that we can do it but I think the easiest one would simply be to import a sphere and then attach it to the rest of the mesh. Uh, because actually extruding this with the subdivision surface modifier would be a little bit of a pain to just do this and then again this and then again this. First of all you won't really manage to match it that well and second of all it's going to be a lot of work. So let's just, while well, having this here selected, press Shift S, cursor to select it, and that's going to bring the cursor up here. Shift A, sphere, make sure that the segments are at 16 again. So now we have less topology from the top to the bottom, and bring it in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale it until it pretty much matches this image here. And what I'm going to do also is make sure that this orange line lines up with this black line. So I'm going to scale it a little bit, something like this. And this is basically matching the rest of the image or the, um, the reference. So in edit mode, I'm just going to select these here, delete the vertices. And now we basically have something that looks fine to select uh, this and this object here, Control J, uh, J to join them into one mesh. And now if I move one, the other one should move as well. But we still see that there is a gap. So what we can do is uh, select this ring of edges, then this ring of edges, not that one. So this inner one and this inner one and F3 Mer merge by distance and bring up the threshold until, until they snap together. So now this is basically one mesh. So now that we have that, shade it smooth, apply the subdivision and you can see that it looks great. We can define this here again by just going here, enabling this here, bevel it, Going to do the same thing here in order to give it a little bit more definition and here as well making it a lot slimmer and here of course as well a little bit so now we have a pawn look at this basically looks great it's uh, an easy mesh you can basically uh, import it into a game while not being subdivided um, can give it some beveling if you want to but uh, this is basically a pawn based upon the reference image so you should be able to use it looks pretty good now you can see it has this little star pattern over here on the top as well but I don't think it's that big of an issue if you wanted to you could still resolve it um, and it shouldn't be making that much of a hassle so I will see you in the next one where we're going to make the bishop uh, very similar approach. So yeah, I'm expecting to see you. See ya. Bye.